we sure appreciate the uh, invite. Uh, once again, it's really an honor to hear all these comments uh, firsthand. And it seems like every year this program gets better and better and better. And obviously that means really good mentoring uh, from the staff and good leadership from the staff and good support. So it's, uh, it, it's all very good. I, I just, in the interest of uh, growth and development, I'd ask uh, you know, all the fellows, as you think about your experiences, even a couple of years out, be sure that you're sharing these with staff that, uh, that you know, as you reflect on this experience, I mean, there have got to be uh, points that this program can be even better. And uh, so, you know, feel free to continue to reflect and continue to correspond uh, because that's important to kind of give back to the program. Kind of reminds me of a, a tip that I've always given to my, uh, my kids uh, in, when they entered the workforce. And that was that uh, when you're ending a performance review, a structured performance review or a coaching discussion, the person doing the coaching or the structuring sometimes doesn't give you all that's on their mind or they don't share it as candidly as they possibly could. So I'd say ask, your, ask the person doing the review with you before you leave the room, just you know, one, give me one more point that's gonna help my development. Uh, and, you know, in what area, if any, I realize I'm a superstar, you told me I'm a superstar, but there has got to be one area that I could focus on to grow better, to develop better. And, and what I've found by asking that question over time, you really do get some really strong uh, good feedback. And, and most of it is more tough minded. Uh, and I'll give you a, a specific example. There's a general manager that I had one time really early in my career. I was probably, you know, in my early thirties and he was the toughest, meanest person I ever worked for. Um, you know, he, I mean, he ran a $3 billion uh, business and I was uh, kind of the marketing VP. And at that time, that was a really big business. And he, he, was, he was just the toughest guy in the world. And um, so, but he gave me a very good, you know, kind of performance discussion, just like you're doing with the fellows program. And, um, and so before I left the room one time, I said, okay, if you know, you're a tough, mean guy. And uh, what, what can you tell me that might be tough and mean about what I could do to develop? And, to, you know, he, he was really very candid. He said, well, there are two things you could do. You've got a lot of good things that you tell your people, uh, but you don't have their attention when you do it. So you've got to create more of an environment where people are going to listen to your feedback or feel it or whatever. And one of the things uh, that this guy used to do to get people's attention in the organization, you know, you're dealing with hundreds and thousands of people, hundreds of managers, he used to call Sunday airport meetings. He'd invite everybody on a Friday afternoon to come to a certain airport for like a performance discussion about something that could have gone better. And he said, Ed, he said, you, you probably are not mean enough to do that. But he said, you know, you, you, you need to get a little uh, tougher on things. And uh, that was a piece of coaching feedback that uh, he, he, you know, he never gave me. And I, I think there was another piece of feedback that he gave me that day. And this is like going back, you know, uh, 40 years ago, he, he said to me, Ed, you know, you're uh, kind of an analytical guy, 
And he said, you, you, you take time to think about things. You do, you do a lot of marketing research. Um, and he said, you'd be far better off if you just trusted your gut more. He said, you can, you know, the research is terrific. Uh, but if you, if you trust your intuition more and act a little bit faster, quicker, uh, trusting your intuition, you're going to be far better off. The organization is going to get far better off. So these two pieces of advice came as I was ready to kind of walk out the door, right? And I had to encourage it. I had to ask him to kind of like peel it back, be tough. And I'll tell you, both of those pieces of feedback, because I remember them, I'm talking about them now, uh, it, they really helped me become not only a kind of a better leader later in life, but, but certainly a better everything. I mean, I became more creative, more entrepreneurial, uh, more of this, more of that. People around me uh, embrace these ideas. But what will basically happen is this should be an ongoing uh, process and feedback that you get, you want to encourage the toughest, most objective, the most real, so you can learn from it and, uh, you know, improve the value of your organizations and, and really every, everybody around you. So when I heard originally that there was this grassroots uh, mentoring program going on at the UW, about that time our family was ready to uh, uh, want a gift to the UW. And it seemed to me, hearing about the fellows program, uh, it was the perfect opportunity for us to help support because it really, you know, for me, I certainly wouldn't have had any degree of success in my career without feedback and mentoring from other people. I mean, you gotta be really receptive to it. Uh, but boy, if you don't get it, uh, you know, uh, you, you're, you're gonna go, uh, you're not gonna be as best as you can be. So the idea of mentoring, whether you're doing the mentoring or somebody's mentoring you, and it could be sideways in the organization, all sorts of different ways, I really related to that, so. Um, uh, that's one of the reasons why we, we love the idea of this program and thrilled that people seem to be benefiting from it. Um, this is mainly, it can, it can work both ways um, uh, for the incomings and the outgoings, but there, there, as I usually talk about at, at commencements, there are four things for me as I've kind of gone through my career and I've watched other people and I've kind of kicked around myself that, uh, that have been lessons learned for me. And uh, the, the first one is the idea of being passionate about what you're doing and your circumstance. And I hear this coming through in some of your, your comments uh, where you know, this is not exactly what you thought it was going to be, but oh my God, you were passionate about it and passionate about getting the energy from it that you figured out how to do it. Um, one of the, the, the saddest observations looking back at my career is I've seen so many talented people, even best friends when, you know, I was kind of starting out who always tended to kind of look ahead. Okay, this job is not my ideal job, but, uh, uh, you know, so I want to kind of cut my career and success around what I want to do, not exactly what I'm doing today. And so my number one uh, kind of lesson learned in the career, what I, what I found is the more I kind of focused on what I was doing and passionate about what I was doing, not 
not what I wanted to do, but if I was passionate about what I was doing, and if I got results out of what I was doing, then all sorts of doors open. I mean, new jobs, other opportunities, and then when these doors open, you can do just about anything in your career. So first thing is uh, be passionate about what you're doing. Um, the grass may be greener, but if you don't get results in what you're currently doing, whether it's the fellows program, you're, you're not taking full advantage and you may be restricting other doors from opening. Um, the, the next kind of lesson learned for me is the idea of embracing insecurity and how do you feel about insecurity? You're going out into the, you know, the, a new opportunity, a new challenge, um, uh, work in a work environment, the incomings are now about to take on a new challenge. And I would hope that you do feel some insecurity about it, as confident as you may be, uh, as well prepared and well educated. I found that people throughout my career who are a little bit insecure uh, really rise to the challenges much differently than those people who uh, are really confident over the top. And it's great to be confident and to show that. But at the same time, you know, business problems, personnel problems, leadership problems, cultural problems. I mean, this is tough stuff. So it is really good to feel just a little bit insecure because you tend, if you do, you tend to be leave no stone unturned and and you you tend to work a little bit harder at everything so if you're feeling a little insecure as you take this next step and 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 as you move up the leadership ranks if you're a little insecure embrace it it's it's kind of a good thing i think it's going to give you lots of terrific energy um, the next thing uh, is, and this is going to sound just awfully uh, basic and, um, you know, I don't want to hear it type thing, but the idea of working hard. I mean, the smarter, what I have found is oftentimes really smart, intelligent, well-educated, kind of perfect people, you would think, uh, for future potential. Are, pe are people who don't work, are, some of those people don't work the hardest. I mean, uh, uh, on the other side of the coin, I mean, it, uh, it, the company that we had in Seattle, Immunex, I mean, when I got there, I was so impressed with, um, and we we're a relatively small company, so I, I knew everybody at the time. And it, it, I was so impressed where, you would have some of the world's best scientists, National Academy level scientists, who work the hardest. I mean, you know, they, the, the people who did, they did more experiments than anybody else. They came in earlier, they left later. Uh, they were more interactive. They worked so hard at everything. Uh, they gave lectures, they did all this. And so, uh, you know, that's the other side of the coin. I mean, these were the people who, um, who, who did discover the drugs, who did develop the drugs, who cleared them through the FDA. And these were, these were really the muscle of the organization, not only because of their talents, but because they worked the hardest. So don't, you know, don't take being so good and so well educated and all the things that you've done and all that success don't take that for granted as you take the next level make the next step work hard as hell at it um, the other thing um, i think is the fourth thing is really all about uh, the word leadership and um and leadership when i was kind of growing up it was all about you know people who were in the big offices and, and all this kind of stuff and kind of ran these big organizations and, and all that. 
but once I, you know, once I sort of worked my way up, it, it became clear to me that leadership was a lot about personal initiative. It was a lot about initiating things and getting things done. And um, I'll give you a specific example at, uh, at Immunex. There was a, a VP that we had a, in manufacturing who on a Friday afternoon heard at a meeting that we were gonna suffer greatly because our capacity in two or three years was gonna be severely restricted for a product. And um, so this was a Friday afternoon and on a Sunday morning, I was at a Starbucks in Bellevue and I get a phone call from this uh, guy, his name is Mike. And Mike calls me and he's, I, he said, Ed, he said, we've got to expand this capacity. I was at this meeting on Friday afternoon. And, um, you know, I said, okay, Mike, you know, let's kind of meet about it later. You know, let's have dinner or something. Let's talk more about it. He says, no, I'm in Germany. He said, I flew to Germany and I met with people who can expand our capacity and uh, we're ready to cut a deal. And he said, you know, I want to, you know, I want to feel like you're on board with this. And I said to him, well, uh, geez, I don't, you know, I thought out loud, you know, do I really, uh, do I really have the authority to cut this deal? Do I, can I tell him he's in Germany to cut this deal or do I need to go to the board and all that? So I took a page out of his book and I said, Mike, cut the deal. You know, we'll, <laughs> we'll talk to the board on Monday about it. But here's a guy who, showed incredible personal leadership uh, by taking action and, and, and really firing a shot on his own. So for me, it was a lot about, you know, leadership is not only about running, you know, organizations, small or large, not only about culture and all the things that we know about, but it's uh, really taking personal action and you'd be surprised how few people do it. I mean, people will sit at conference tables with really good ideas. Uh, they don't always have the courage or maybe they're a little bit more uh, introverted or whatever. But um, as you go out and do what you're going to do, um, think about yourself as a playmaker. Think about your uh, colleagues as potential playmakers. Like I'd call Mike a playmaker. I mean, Mike made a play that saved us lots of money and lots of time. Mike was a playmaker. So think about yourself. Think about leadership in a way that you're going to be a, a playmaker, whether it be an individual contributor or you know, leading organizations and helping other people. I, uh, I, I just want to say that the decision to, to convert to online learning at the UW, uh, when it was taken by the president, was an amazing example to me from afar. Uh, I'm in California now from afar of really terrific leadership. I mean, it may have been the kind of decision that was not supported uh, by some or was supported by others. I don't really know. I don't have any insight to that. But when I heard that UW was converting to uh, online learning, I said, this is in early March, this is an example of courage. It was a pretty foggy situation back then for every other university in the country. But yet, uh, your university uh, took it upon themselves to make a decision that had to be a tough one. We're going to do this. And by all accounts, everything I've read, you were in the free, you were in the university that made this first this this decision and had the courage to make this decision. 
And um, while there are lots of pluses and minuses, I just think it's a fantastic example of, um, of leadership and action. So I want to congratulate the incomings. I know you've got lots of challenges ahead and congratulate the outgoings. I know you've got lots of challenges ahead. And uh, by the way, I uh, told my, uh, my uh, grandson that I was going to uh, be in a fellows transition meeting. And uh, he asked me, he's six years old, well, what is the transition meeting? He said, it sounds like a fellows fest. <laughs> so, <laughs> so from here forward, I'm thinking of this, uh, this event as a fellows fest. Um, really, thank you for all your comments. Uh, everyone uh, in support at the UW uh, behind this program, thank you.